And our first guest tonight is Julian Davis, who's a community activist and also the executive director of the Tenderloin Economic Development uh, uh, Group. He's also a member of the board of various organizations like SF Tomorrow and the People's Organization and the SF Housing Development Corporation, so on. And we appreciate your being here. Thank you're you very, so you're being, you're being very busy right now. Correct. You care about the community. I do. Now the Tenderloin, tell this group called Tenderloin Economic Development. It's a corporation. It's a nonprofit corporation. It's a nonprofit. Uh, just recently uh, formed mm -hmm. uh, by the board of the North and Market Neighborhood Improvement Corporation. Uh, what is that? That's an entity that's been in the Tenderloin uh, for the past close to decade. Uh, they were able to successfully establish the community benefit district for the Tenderloin. Uh, which handles uh, street cleaning, graffiti abatement. Oh, it's like an improvement greening. district. Exactly. Right. It's like a business improvement district. Okay, again, that's, that, that's a model that began in New York City where business people especially got together and, and got fed up with the city's services. And Correct. Yeah, there's been quite a few established in the city now, and the one in the Tenderloin is actually the city's largest community benefit district. And uh, now, the Tenderloin, uh, most people in the Bay Area sort of know where that is. Why don't we try to describe it? Both sure. And it's uh, the, the, the perimeter and also it, some of the character. Sure. Yeah, the, the perimeter we're looking at from Polk, uh, Van Ness in, in the west, uh, Post, Geary Streets, uh, you know, around there on the north side, uh, around Powell uh, on the east, and Market Street in the south. It's about a 50 square block uh, mm -hmm. uh, area uh, near Civic Center. So it's, it, it becomes um, a neighborhood that borders on the north they're very wealthy mm. and on the east all of Union Square and all the wealth that comes with that business Correct. Actually. and on the west really you're beginning Civic Pacific Center. Heights uh, and you're, in, so you're beginning another wealthy area so it's sort sure. of be a sandwich or it's it loca located like an island surrounded by wealth but it isn't wealthy yeah at least in those two sides that you mentioned to the north and to the east uh, to the south is the south of market yes. another low-income uh, neighborhood but uh, and 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 to the east uh, to the west the western addition neighborhood so I would say at least on two flanks it is mm -hmm. uh, you know it is in close proximity to wealthier neighborhoods uh, the neighborhood itself is a very low-income neighborhood uh, full-on one in four of Tenderloin residents are uh, you know, living below the pop adults living below mm -hmm. inofficial poverty mm -hmm. between the ages of 18 and 64. Uh, the average median income for the neighborhood is about 20,000 uh, per capita income, about 16,000. Uh, so you're dealing with a, a very, a very low-income neighborhood a year. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Uh, it's also a very diverse neighborhood. Uh, you know, areas like Little Saigon are in the neighborhood. There's yeah. a large Vietnamese population. Mm -hmm, Half of the city's Indian population lives in the in the Tenderloin. Uh, and so it's very diverse uh, African American community, Latino community, a growing Latino population. In fact, uh, it's an amazing little neighborhood. And and uh, at night, uh, all the diverse groups you just mentioned are represented by really interesting restaurants and social places where people come together. Absolutely. In a that, in a way that's not politically correct. In other words, it is truly the Tenderloin style life, not prescribed by the outside world. A lot of artists live there too. Absolutely. And it was traditionally, uh, as you know, uh, the West Coast Theater District, and in many ways, it's, it still is. There's, you know, the theaters, the big the Orpheum, or you know, there's entertainment venues like the Warfield, mm -hmm. the Exit Plushroom. Theater. You've got nightclubs like Crash. You've got, you know, the San Francisco Comedy Club, for instance, yeah. the San Francisco Recovery Theater. Uh, so in many ways, uh, what our project, the Tenderloin Economic Development Project, would like to do is reinforce and really bring support to uh, that culture in the neighborhood, uh, the arts culture, the entertainment culture. Now that's a challenge because th other neighborhoods have heard that c call mm. and uh, it turns out to be one that winds up not preserving the neighborhood and mm. there's some really terrible experiences in San Francisco sure. with that happening. Sure. So why wouldn't someone who lives there not be concerned that by making it more attractive mm. the prices uh, and rents go up? Mm -hmm. And therefore, you may have wanted to preserve the character, but in the end, you start pushing out a little more, more and more those people who can afford to live there on sixteen thousand dollars a year. Sixteen thousand know, dollars a year is it's very. It's, it's incredible for San Francisco. And those are extremely valid concerns. Uh, I think that one thing that makes the Tenderloin neighborhood unique, as opposed to 
uh, you know, the Mission District or the Lower Haight or, or South and Market or some areas that, you know, during the dot-com area, we saw some of mm -hmm. these issues around gentrification and displacement mm -hmm. is that so much of the housing stock in the Tenderloin has been now preserved as permanently affordable housing. Uh, you've got major, you know, nonprofit and even for-profit uh, developers in the area that have built affordable family housing, that have uh, changed SRO hotels into housing for the formerly homeless. So uh, outfits like TNDC, THC, uh, Mercy House, Housing, uh, AF, AF Evans. Do you have an Glide. idea what percent uh, they, uh, I, 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 I think there's a lot of private ownership as well still though. I don't have an exact percentage yeah. for you, but the, the sort of working theory is that given that so much of the neighborhood has been preserved as permanently affordable housing, there's a real opportunity to bring some public safety to the neighborhood, uh, to revitalize the neighborhood without gentrifying it to the point of uh, making it unaffordable for the mm -hmm. residents who currently live there. Well, we've had uh, representatives of the Tenderloin uh, Development Corporation from AG Ev Evans, mm. from uh, John Stewart was here just recently. And we've, we've tried to feature the affordable mm. uh, non-profit uh, profit and for a non-profit low-income and affordable housing developers here. Sure. And I, while I, I think that, and I, I think there's some great projects going on there, a lot of those units, uh, a lot of the units are still in private hands, which means mm -hmm. rent can fluctuate. You know, in other words, you still have the potential that the more good you do, the more it will become such an attractive place to live since it's so close to Knob Hill, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the boundary of the Tenderloin moves with the economic cycles. Mm -hmm. We were taught that Sutter Street is when we're in a boom. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, I mean, uh, Sutter Street is when we're in an economic bust because then the Tenderloin expands. Mm -hmm. When we're in an economic boom, it moves down to Geary Street mm -hmm. and below O'Farrell. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a thermometer of the economy, and, and I don't want to see it this true. Sure, and neither do I, and I think no one really knows, but I think if we look carefully at, at the, the existing housing stock, it is true that many of the formerly uh, single-room occupancy hotel rooms have been converted for housing for formerly homeless individuals. There's a lot of family housing that's been built by TNDC. You know, uh, you've got affordable housing that's managed by uh, Tenderloin Housing Clinic, et cetera. So there's a really large stock of low-income housing in the mm -hmm. Tenderloin. Uh, so the idea is to create a viable low-income community. I mean, why is it that only people in you know, Pacific Heights deserve safe streets? To me, that's, that doesn't equal justice. There's a lot of families. There's a lot of youth that live in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, so the rationale that sort of improving the neighborhood, making it a safer place to live, is somehow in itself gentrification, that I don't no, agree with. Not, with. not when it comes to safety. I, I totally agree with you when it comes to safety. I'm more thinking about the actual use of the commercial Absolutely. character. Well, the commercial character is something we'd really like to do is bring some neighborhood serving businesses into the neighborhood. I mean, a lot of folks in the in the Tenderloin right now are suffering from not having a, you know, a grocery store to be able to, to be able mm -hmm. to go buy fresh produce at, for instance. I mean, that's something a lot of people just take for granted. There's a grocery store in the neighborhood in the Tenderloin there's no grocery store. So we're working with Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation to try and bring a grocery store into the... Oh, you uh, mean a full-size supermarket? It, this would be sort of mid-sized to smaller, sure. potentially 8,000 to 15,000 square foot supermarket. Right. Correct? There's plenty of corner delicatessens at high prices. Exactly. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, liquor stores that have a few options in terms right. of some fresh fruit and vegetables, but nothing really with That's a comprehensive right. so tucked away in a corner. Mm. How do you handle the crime situation, especially as you get into the core of the Tenderloin? Mm. Ellis, Turk, and so on. Uh, what can you do, or what do you want to do if you had the, the resources to make it a safer place? Yeah, you know, first of all, I think that C Captain Jimenez is doing a fabulous job and is working with the community and his, it uh, really demands a lot of respect to the neighborhood. It's not like they're not doing their job in that neighborhood. They're, they're doing all they can. I think in a lot of ways, you know, with public safety, and for instance, let's look at the dynamic between public safety and, say, attracting new businesses to the area. Mm -hmm. Uh, the one feeds the other. So to the extent that a neighborhood gets safer, more businesses might want to move in, uh, more businesses actually coming in can actually improve the safety outlook in the neighborhood as well. I look at, for instance, Morty's Delicatessen on uh, Hyde and Golden, Aid Golden Gate is a perfect example of where, uh, you know, there was at one time on that corner uh, quite a bit of, uh, you know, open, you know, drug use, drug dealing. But with uh, that institution now, with life on the street, people coming in and out, you know, Hastings Law School students, folks who work in the neighborhood, the character of that corner has really changed. So in a lot of ways, uh, you know, I see that there's ways to improve the public safety outlook through an economic development model. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are you going to do? I mean, I agree with you. That's a, let's say, let's take that as a tactic. What mm -hmm. are you going to do to make that happen with your company? Well, I don't think anybody right now is really marketing and promoting the neighborhood uh, as a place to come open business, opening it, uh, uh, 
marketing it to entrepreneurs as a neighborhood uh, to move to. And I think there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of business opening in the area. Around. There's a lot of ethnic uh, restaurants, for instance. Yes, there are. There's there's uh, arts and entertainment. What we'd like to do is build on those sectors mm -hmm. and really target uh, and attract uh, new business to the area. How do you do that? Uh, I think you just start with basic. It, it's ba it comes down to ba having a voice for the neighborhood and having a basic, uh, you know, marketing and promotional uh, approach to. I think right now, if you look on Craigslist, for instance, even mm -hmm. there, there's very few uh, vacant retail spaces in the Tenderloin even listed on Craigslist. Uh, there's very few, uh, you know, commercial office spaces listed on there. Maybe one or two or three. I was looking the other day. Uh, so just getting these, uh, we'd like to on our website uh, as, a, as a preliminary goal, mm -hmm. mapping the neighborhood, mm -hmm. having all the available vacant retail space uh, with the square footage and the price, whether it's for sale or for rent, uh, available for you know entrepreneurs, whether you're you know, a club owner or a restaurateur that wants right. to expand your business. Now you're going to be able to have a one-stop place where you can see, see where the available place is. Right now, there's no resource like that. You know? Yeah, in other words, it's economic development corporation tactics, uh, and, and, and of course, celebrating those who come in. On, you know, sure. and, and have openings and, sure. and, and get it out into the media. Sure. You can just sometimes it's a roller. Uh, it just starts with one. Sure. And when when that one per person comes in or one business comes in, then sure. That, well, that sounds very th that that's hopeful. And, yeah. And, and the the I I'm, I want to go back to with the one minute or two we have left to the security part because mm. that's a concern of mine. Mm. I agree by making the uh, neighborhood busy with economic life. You, you decrease a little bit on the crime, but is there anything more you can do? Because the reputation is so bad right now, even among tourists in the Union Square area, uh, with the quality of life situation, mm -hmm. people who are sleeping on the streets, which is really increasing a great deal in, day, in broad daylight, mm -hmm. other kinds of uh, harassment crimes. How do you confront sure. that bad image? Well, I think genuine economic development is about community empowerment. And to the degree that we can offer people opportunities uh, j new jobs. I'd love to see these new uh, neighborhood serving businesses hire locally, hire Tenderloin residents, hire folks who might be hard to employ, working with job trainers and employment developers to uh, make sure that we have retention services available for folks who have trouble keeping a job, working with you know property managers in the area to link Tenderloin okay, residents. Now you're, you're becoming more than an economic development corporation. This is about employment development. It's about business attraction. It's about public safety. And for safety, the people that do not get into those programs, if you were lucky, the ones who are just bad guys or women out there, mm. what do you suggest about that to protect the neighborhood, or the majority of the, the people, including the kids that live there? You know, I think I've always subscribed to the solution to, 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 to homelessness is really providing homes. Uh, but not the homeless. I'm talking about criminals. Uh-huh. Oh, you know, well, I think there's both. You, you look on the street, there's folks who are hardcore drug dealers. There's other folks who are dealing with... What do you do about that? They're homeless and are dealing with because substance abuse problems. that's the And there's some quality of life infractions. There is, but, I mean, the really violent crime is really not happening in the Tenderloin. You've got quality of life infractions. You've got people defecating in the street. You've got people... Uh, you know, using crack in the street, and a lot of these are problems associated with you know substance abuse problems and homelessness. And I feel like I, I was reading recently that in Seattle they've started just you know housing their chronic uh, drunk population, just getting them indoors. I'm a wholehearted supporter of of, of of housing people, getting them in uh, with the availability of supportive okay. services. Well, now we're going to another area where sure. we probably do not agree, but I do agree that it's going to be good for the uh, the tenderloin if you can accomplish the first two items that we we're talking sure. about. Julian Davis, thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Art. Stay with us. We'll be right back.